2018, prescribing capital punishment for yaba use and trafficking. The government adopted various programs to take health care to those sets of people, says Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. President Mahmoud Abdul Hamid urges people's representatives to respect public properly. Government cannot be changed without election and harsh posh unity has no future, comments Armour League General Secretary Obaidul Qadir. Mahalaya celebrated heralding advent of Goddess Durga and beginning Devi Paksha. US and North Korea agree to hold second Trump UN summit soon. And Bangladesh women beat Pakistan by six wickets in lone ODI in Cox's Bazaar. Assalamu alaikum. Bustan Ahmed welcoming you all to news at 10 on BTV, BTV World, and BTV Chattogram Center. Assalamu alaikum. And I'm Elise Abraham with you. You've just heard the headlines and now moving on to the details. The Cabinet has approved in principle the draft of new Narcotic Control Act 2018, keeping provision of death sentence as maximum punishment for carrying, taking, selling or smuggling Yaba. The approval was given at the weekly meeting of the Cabinet, held with Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in the chair at the Prime Minister's office in Dhaka today. The provision of strict measures was kept in the new act to control the massive spread of Yaba tablets. The law has the provision of death sentence or lifetime imprisonment as maximum punishment for producing, trading and using more than 5 grams of yaba. It also has another provision of capital punishment and minimum lifetime imprisonment for carrying 25 grams or more than 25 grams of heroin, cocaine or similar types of core category drugs. Punishment for less than 25 grams of core category narcotics will be minimum 2 years of imprisonment and maximum 10 years of jail. Besides, the Cabinet approved in principle the draft of Bangladesh Technical Education Board Act 2018. The Cabinet gave final approval to the draft of Bangladesh Labour Amendment Act 2018. At the beginning of the meeting, the Cabinet congratulated Bangladesh Under-18 National Women's Football Team for clinching South Under-18 Women's Championship title. Cabinet Secretary Mohammed Shafiul Alam told these while briefing reporters at the Secretariat after the meeting. The Cabinet Secretary said the previous Narcotic Control Act was enacted in 1990 and the draft for the new law will be formulated by coordinating the 28-year-old law with all international acts related to narcotics control. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina said her government has taken a number of programs to take medical facilities to the doorsteps of the people. The Prime Minister also mentioned that the government is setting up medical colleges and institutions as per the demand and now it is the responsibility and duty of the doctors to provide service to people. She hoped people will get that service. The Premier said this while inaugurating the Golden Jubilee Celebration Program of Shere Bangla Medical College, Borishal, through video conferencing from Ghanubhavan this afternoon. Issuing a warning that negligence to patients will be accepted, she sharply criticized the physicians who are not available at their workstation at the Okozela level. The government is appointing doctors and nurses as required, but it's regrettable that doctors don't stay in Upozilas where it's supposed to have 10 doctors in one Upozila hospital. Only one doctor is found in some areas, she said. In her speech at the function, the Prime Minister said the second nuclear power plant would be constructed in the southern part of the country. The government has already conducted survey in several islands in Barisal and it will choose any of those islands to construct the country's next nuclear power plant. Health Minister Mohammed Nasim and State Minister for Health and Family Welfare Zahid Malik spoke at the function among others. 
Later, the Prime Minister, through a video conference from Gono Bhabun, inaugurated four multi-storied buildings comprising 345 flats constructed at Doya Gonj and Dhalpur for cleaners of Dhaka South City Corporation. The government in 2013 took up the project for constructing five residential buildings at Doya Gonj, five at Dhalpur and two at Shutrapur at the cost of Dhaka 190 crore for cleaning of the city corporation. Under the project, four buildings were inaugurated today and constructed work of eight other buildings is going on. LGRD and Cooperatives Minister Khandukar Musharraf Hussain spoke on the occasion among others. President Mahmoud Abdul Hamid has urged the public representatives to show due respect to general people and behave well with them, as they are the real source of the state power. He was speaking at a mass reception on Guru Doyal College playground on the first day of his three-day visit to his hometown Kishorganj today. Kishorganj District Reception Committee hosted the reception to Abdul Hamid as he paid first visit to his home district after taking oath of office as the country's president for the second consecutive term on April 24. The president urged the voters to choose the party which would work to gear up country's overall development in next Jatiya Shangshad election. The head of the state reiterated his call to the country's all political parties to nominate good candidates for the next general election in the greater interest of the country and its people. Seeking people's blessings, he said that he wants to spend the rest of his life for the welfare of the country and people. Kishogan Jela Purishad Chairman, Advocate Mohammed Zilu Rahman presided over the reception program which was followed by a cultural program. Members of the parliament, Rezwan Ahmed Taufik, Afzal Hussein, Sohra Buddin and Dilara Begum Asma, District Awadi President Advocate Kamrul Hassan Shah Jahan, General Secretary M.A. Afzal, Director of Rashtrapati Abdul Hamid Medical College, Russell Ahmed Tuhin, among others were present on the occasion. General Secretary and Road Transport and Bridges Minister Obaidul Qadir has commented that BNP's so-called unity will not be lasting long and there would not be any change of government without the general election. He was speaking at a discussion meeting titled Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's tenure in the street and commerce sector at Krishibit Institution in Dhaka today. Aumali Industry and Commerce Subcommittee organized the discussion program. Aumali Advisory Council Member Kazi Akramuddin Ahmed, Prime Minister's Political Advisor H.T. Imam, Private Sector Development Affairs Advisor Salman F. Rahman, Former Bangladesh Bank Governor Dr. Atiyur Rahman, Industries and Commerce Division Secretary Mohammad Abdul Sattar, and FDCCI President Shafir Islam Mohyuddin also spoke at the function. Obaidul Qadir said the government passed the Digital Security Act to suppress the wicked but to help common man. The BNP has no alternative to coming to power without taking part in election, he added. Jashud President and Information Minister Hassan Hawk Inu has said removing the mask of gentility Dr. Kamal Hussain, B. Chaudhry and company have somersaulted in the field of politics favoring convicted Khalida and Tariq. He said this while speaking at a Jashud rally at Demra in the capital today. Jashud leader Freedom Fighter Shahidul Islam chaired the meeting while Jashud General Secretary Shirin Akhtar MP and Vice President Shafiud Dimola spoke among others. The Information Minister said Dr. Kamal B. Chaudhry and company are plotting to ruin the election in, con in collusion with the BNP.
The Hindu community of the country celebrating the Mahalaya, the auspicious occasion heralding the advent of Goddess Durga. Mahalaya considered as ceremonial invocation of Goddess Durga is observed seven days prior to the initiation of the Durga Puja, the largest religious festival of the Hindu community. Hindus believe the earth prepares itself and welcomes the coming of the goddess and her children through the celebration. Durga Puja will begin on October 15 with different rituals on the day of Maha Shastri. Mahanagar Sharbajunin Puja Committee has arranged special programs of Mahalaya at Dhakeshuri Temple. On this day, Hindus, he, Hindus remember and pay homage to the deceased ancestors by performing a puja and offering Brahmins clothes food and sweets in their name. And now, international news. North Korea and the United States have agreed to hold the second summit at an early date for further negotiation. North Korea top leader Kim Jong-un and visiting U.S. Secretary to State Mike Pompeo made the pledge to make the arrangements North Korea state-run news agency KCNA reported. Pompeo made a whirlwind visit to North Korea for talks with Kim on the issue of denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula and the establishment of a peace regime. The talks were productive and wonderful, at which mutual stands were fully understood and opinions exchanged, said the report. The detained Chinese head of Interpol, Men Hongwei, is being investigated for alleged bribe-taking. In its announcement of the investigation today, China's public security ministry said the probe was correct, wise, to show that shows determination of comrade Xi Jinping's determination to fully carry out the struggle against traffic. Men Hongwei was first reported missing in late September after traveling from Interpol HQ in France to China. He is also a vice minister for public security in China. His wife has revealed that he sent her a text message with a knife emoji on the day he went missing. Meanwhile, in a statement on Twitter yesterday, Interpol said it had received Mr. Men's resignation with immediate effect. This year's Nobel Prize for Economics has been awarded to two U.S. economists, William Nordhus and Paul Romer, for their work on sustainable growth. Their research focuses on how climate change and technology have affected the economy. Professor William Nordhus of Yale University was the first person to create a model that described the interplay between the economy and the climate. Professor Paul Romer of New York University Stern School of Business has shown how economic forces govern the willingness of firms to produce new ideas and innovations. And now some more national news. An agreement was signed between Bangladesh and India to procure 200 single-deck AC bus for BRTC. The agreement was signed at a hotel in the capital today. DRTC Chairman Farid Ahmed Bhuya signed the document on behalf of Bangladesh, while Ashok Leyland Regional Manager Tanmay Mitra signed on behalf of India. Secretary, Road Transport and Highways Division Mohammad Nazrul Islam, BRTC high officials and representatives of the bus supplier company were present. And now, news on sports.
Bangladesh women cricket team beat Pakistan by six wickets in the only one-day match in Cox's Bazaar today. Bangladesh won the toss and sent Pakistan to bat first at Sheikh Kamal International Stadium. The visitors were all out on only 94 runs in 34 overs, five balls. In reply, Bangladesh reached their victory target of 95 runs for four with 126 balls remaining. Farzana Haq scored 48 runs while Rumana Ahmed scored 34 for Bangladesh. Bangladeshi bowler Khadija Tul Kubra bagged six wickets and was a judge player of the match. Australia are trialling by 452 runs at the end of second day of first test of two match series against Pakistan in Dubai. The Aussies scored 30 runs for no loss at the end of the day in their first innings. Earlier, Pakistan started their second day's batting with over night score of 255 runs for three. Pakistan were all out on 482 runs in the first innings. And now to end the bulletin, let's re-wrap the cop stories. Cabinet approves draft of Narcotics Control Act 2018 prescribing capital punishment for Yaba use and trafficking. <music> Government adopted various programs to take healthcare to doorsteps of people, says Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. President Mohammed Abdul Hamid urges people representative to respect public properly. <music> Government cannot be changed without election and hotspot unity has no future, comments Oami League General Secretary Obadul Qadir. Mohalla has celebrated heralding advent of Goddess Durga and beginning Devi Paksha. U.S. and North Korea agree to hold second Trump UN summit soon. And Bangladesh women beat Pakistan by six wickets in lone ODI in Cox's Bazaar. that's all from the newsroom at the moment. Thank you for staying with us. And we invite you to watch our 11.30 Bangla News. Until then, Kabaatis.